what I was trying to when I was trying to separate these two terms, it's not like there's no bridge between them, right? These are two ends of a spectrum, and right, like th something that could start out as hashtag Me Too could slowly over time morph into Me Too going too far into trial by media. I think that's what the spectrum. Like th I think the four of us are setting up this spectrum of like responses to sexual assault, um, and you know, responses can happen anywhere along that that line. I also would say that um, that social movements are like occupied by many people who have very different visions of what that social movement is. Like there are so many feminists who do feminism very differently from how I would do feminism. And then it's not like I can go around saying, well, they're not real feminists, but it means that like they're definitely, it's like, you know, when someone says like, there are, when we, we can all acknowledge, for example, that there are very bad drivers. It doesn't mean that everyone should stop driving cars. It means there are people who drive in ways that we wouldn't agree with, right? It's the same way with social movements, right? There are many people who don't use hashtag me too the way that I've historically wanted to talk about sexual assault for myself. And like, I think, like, personally, I never named my attacker. He, for some reason, named himself <laughs> and that was always interesting to me um because then it kind of spun into like at least within the community at columbia and then started to snowball into the rest of america and now hi i'm here in london <laughs> um into a sort of trial by media so um i think i would have loved for my case to have been handled with discretion so that I didn't have to talk about rape every time I meet someone at a party, <laughs> right? But this is, I think that this is proof of uh, society's hunger for these kinds of stories.